Hi everyone, my name is Alex. I'm an engineer and my passion is with design, development and prototype production of all sorts of engineering solutions. In this video we will take a look at this extended threading dial indicator which I built for my Emco V13 lathe in order to speed up the thread cutting process. What's special about this indicator is that it works for both metric and imperial threads while it doesn't require any drive gear changes down here where the indicator meshes with the lead screw. Also in this video I will say a few things about the threading dial indicator theory. Particularly I'll try to point out the differences between its use with metric and imperial pitch lead screws and threads. I don't know about your experience, but when I learned the trade I was told never to open the clasp nut until the threading process is completely finished. Otherwise you cannot ensure that the cutting tool will mesh correctly with the thread on the next cutting pass. However, this implies that you have to reverse the spindle after each cutting pass in order to traverse back, which can be annoying and time consuming, particularly if you don't have a, a, a spindle break. I would say keeping the clasp knot closed during thread cutting is pretty much common practice in the world of metric manual lathes without automatic lead screw disengagement. But let's see about that on this sample 1.75 mm pitch thread here. That was the first pass and for the second pass I traversed back with the clasp nut closed, which is standard practice. And for the second pass I don't feed the tool deeper so that we can check the meshing better. And as to expect, tool and threads mesh perfectly. But as I said, that's nothing new, it's standard thread cutting. For the third pass, I'll cheat and disengage the clasp nut in order to spare the spindle reversion. And let's see what happens. And problem. Here you can see clearly how the tool doesn't mesh anymore correctly with the previously cut threads. That's the reason for the rule of keeping the clasp not closed. However, this rule is conservative because there are special cases in which it can be disregarded. Let's try another pitch next. Okay, so I cleaned up this test piece here and reset the lathe for 1mm thread pitch. And between each pass, I'll open the clasp nut here and let's see what happens. Obviously, in this case it doesn't matter if I broke the rule to spare spindle reversion. And this is so because here we have a special case in which the lead screw pitch is a multiple of the thread pitch. Now, as you probably expect, this is also true for a number of other thread pitches. With this 6mm pitch lead screw on my lathe here, the same is true for 0.75, 1.5, 2 and 3 thread, three millimeter thread pitches and a few others but more about this in a minute. Next let's take a look at the theory behind this. To the left we'll consider a lathes with metric lead screw while to the right we'll consider their imperial counterparts. Now basically we need a very important equation here. And in this equation NSP and NLS are spindle and lead screw 
lead screw revolution numbers respectively, while PTH and PLS are thread pitch and lead screw pitch respectively, metric pitches that is. Now, this formula describes that the motions of the tool and the threading point on the workpiece must be equal. The right hand side describes the motion of the tool, which is moved by the lead screw. If for example the lead screw makes one turn, then NLS equals 1, then the tool moves by 1 times the lead screw pitch. The left hand side describes the workpiece's threading point motion. If for example the spindle makes one turn and NSP equals 1, then the threading point moves by 1 times the thread pitch. In simple terms, if this condition, this equals this, is fulfilled, tool and threads mesh perfectly. If we disengage the clasp nut and re-engage it when this equation is fulfilled again, we will encounter no problems, meshing-wise. So what the threading dial indicator does is to indicate when this equation is fulfilled. Let me rearrange it so it is more simple to use and for this I will divide, divide by PTH to bring it to the right. Now let us call this equation the threading condition. I've put a 6 here instead of PLS because a typical metric lead screw pitch is 6 mm. We can derive this condition similarly for imperial pitch lead screw lathes. The only difference is that in the imperial world thread pitch is defined as the thread lead count per inch, which we term ZTH and CLS respectively. Rearranged the threading condition is And similarly as before, I've put a 4 here instead of ZLS because a typical imperial lead screw pitch is 4 TPI. But how does this help us with thread cutting? First, let me use the threading condition to prove to you why we can open the clasp nut for a few particular thread pitches, like I've shown in the video's intro for 1mm pitch, I think. Naturally, we can disengage from the clasp nut at any situation. On the other hand, we cannot re-engage at any situation. The lead screw must turn one or a few complete revolutions until the clasp nut can be re-engaged again. This means NLS must be an integer number. Things are similar for NSP, the number of spindle revolutions. Basically, we don't care how many turns the spindle made until we re-engage the clasp nut. What we care about is that the tool starts at the same threading point on the workpiece. In mathematical terms, this means NSP must be an integer number too. Let's check our case from before, where PTH was 1 mm. So we have 6 for this fraction and see that we get an integer spindle revolution number for any integer lead screw revolution number. In the other example I showed, where we encountered a meshing problem, PTH was 1.75 mm. In this case our fraction equals 4.8. Consequently NLS must be for example 5 to allow for an integer spindle revolution number uh, 24 in this case. The same applies for the imperial lead screw. NSP and NLS must be integer numbers. I've prepared a table for standardized thread pitches and their respective lowest lead screw revolution number NLS, which allows for an integer spindle revolution number NSP. In this table I've highlighted all the special cases with green color that is, cases in which disengaging and re-engaging of the clasp nut doesn't produce problems, meshing-wise. But keep in mind that these numbers apply to lead screws with 6mm here or 4 TPI pitch here. 
Um, if your lead screw pitch differs from this, just use the respective threading condition and recompute the numbers. But what about the unhighlighted thread pitches here in the tables? Well, the number NLS shows us that if we disengage the clasp nut, we must wait for, for example, here, seven lead screw leads to pass until we may re-engage without meshing problem. Here we have twos, sevens, fives and a few other numbers. These two here are in braces because they are quite rare pitches. In the imperial world, on the other hand, these numbers are more systematic. We see twos, fours and a few eights. And these numbers are basis for design of threading dial indicators. What these indicators do is to show us when a certain number of lead screw leads have passed to show us when to re-engage the clasp nut. Or in other words, when the threading condition is fulfilled. The more systematic numbers in the imperial world explain why threading dial indicators are more common here than in the metric world. This is because indication of 2, 4 and or 8 sequential passing leads requires only one dial indicator gear to mesh with the lead screw. And this gear usually has 16 or 24 teeth, a multiple of 8. 8 tooth gears typically aren't used since they may have undercut teeth. In the metric world, on the other hand, it is a little more complicated. You see, to indicate 5 or 7 passing leads, we could use a 35 tooth indicator gear to mesh with the lead screw. Um, however, this way we could not indicate the twos. For this we would need an even tooth count indicator gear. We could use for example a 70 tooth gear to mesh with the lead screw, but this would be awfully large. So usually change gears are used, which however take some elegance out of the threading dial indicator and make the thing a little annoying. Changing gears is annoying enough on the lathe, isn't it? For my MCO V13 lathe, this here 1989 accessory catalog lists a threading dial indicator. Look at how classy those guys were in the show workshops back in my childhood. <laughs> And here it is. I assume this picture here shows the threading dial indicator for the Imperial 4 TPI lead screw version of the slave. We see a presumably 16 tooth gear and the 8 index dial, which we discussed before. I don't have a picture of the slave's original metric threading dial. But my friend Roll told me that he hated the V13's metric thre threading dial because changing gears on this indicator was awkward and it was easy to mess something up. Well, the problem here with these numbers can be puzzling because I wanted a threading dial indicator without change gears. But sooner or later I had the idea not to use several gears to mesh with the lead screw, but rather several indexing dials. From the table we know that we should at least be able to indicate 2, 5 and 7 respectively sequential passing lead screw leads. And this is possible with these upper two indexing dials here. The uppermost one is driven by the lead screw. Of course only if it is engaged with the lead screw, which it is now. like so. Then the middle one is driven by the upper one and the large one is driven by the middle one. So let's say for example we have to cut an M12 thread which has 1.75 millimeters thread pitch. Then from the table we know that we may re-engage the clasp nut every seventh lead screw lead. And this is indicated by means of the triangles here on the middle dial. I hope you can see them. Like for example... First engagement, disengaging, 
Waiting for seven leads to pass by and re-engagement. On the other hand, the uppermost dial allows us to index every lead by means of the dots, every second lead by means of the two dots, or every fifth lead by means of the squares. Alright guys, sorry about the dark image here, but I have to use a very small aperture to get some appreciable depth of field here. But I hope you can see the threading point and the index down here. So let's see if we can cut the 1.75 mm thread from the video's intro with disengaging the clasp nut using the indicator. Important when we use a threading dial indicator is that on the first pass we already engage on an index. Keep an eye on the middle dial here, which I use right now. Alright, first pass. Second pass without feeding deeper. Pass again to the same depth. And you see, no problem smashing wise, everything's fine so far. Okay, so far we covered the issue of metric threads with the aid of these upper two dials here. But you maybe think, what's going on with the large one? This one is to index imperial threads. Yes, this is possible, even though we have a lathe with a metric lead screw here. But to explain this, we need the threading condition again. To the left, let's assume we are cutting imperial, imperial threads on our metric lathe. And on the right, let's assume we are cutting metric threads on an imperial lathe. Now, we just have to slightly modify the threading condition. That is, here we have to replace PTH with ZTH and 25.4 mm. And here we have to replace ZTH with PTH and 25.4 mm. Again, in typical cases PLS equals 6 mm and ZLS equals 4 TPI. But now it becomes clear that finding, an integer, that finding integer number combinations for NSP and NLS, which satisfy these equations, is not so easy anymore. In both cases we must get rid of the 25.4 in the left case, this is accomplished if NLS is, for example, 254, or if we, lose, if we use the lower prime number, 127. Then this cancels out to number 5. And if we simplify the equation, we get... So we see we get an integer spindle revolution number for every standardized imperial thread pitch ZTH, easy peasy. But this is only true if we let 127 lead screw leads pass, that is NLS equals 127. And this is the reason for this large index gear here, which has 127 teeth. But you may say, what's the use then? This large index won't speed up the thread cutting. Because... The next indexing position does not come up quickly. And that's right. Therefore, if I cut imperial threads, I still keep the clasp knot closed. And occasionally reverse the spindle. But this index has another use. Sometimes one must check the thread fit with a mating part. For this you have to get the slide out of the way, 
which takes some time with a closed clasp nut, of course depending on your spindle speed. With this index, on the other hand, you can open the clasp nut, drive the slide out of the way quickly, check the thread fit and then take the slide back. And its correct position is soundly found with the indicator, even if the spindle turned a bit while you check the thread fit. Like so, for example. And now, at long last, back to the case in which we cut metric threads on an imperial lathe. It is only possible to get rid of the 25.4 here, in the numerator if we put 254 or as before 127 here. This means now the spindle revolution number is fixed, not as before the lead screw revolution number. So our equation simplifies to But here is the problem. While indexing imperial threads on an imperial lathe is very easy, doing the same for metric threads is difficult. You see, I've picked out a few metric pitches here and plotted the lead screw revolution number. So obviously there is no way around using change gears here for all these different NLS numbers. That is, of course, if we strive for a purely mechanical indicator. Well guys, I hope you find the one or the other thing in this video helpful. As always, thank you very much for your interest in this video, I appreciate your time. All the best and thank you!